Welcome to our lecture online. Here's the same problem we saw in the previous video, but now we have to add, now we're looking for something different. On the JE test, they did set it up as two separate problems starting from the same verb, from the same initial starting point. A projectile is thrown from a point O on the ground at an angle of 45 degrees from the vertical and with a speed of five, ti five times the square root of two meters per second. The projectile at the highest point of its trajectory splits into two equal parts. One part falls vertically to the ground 0.5 seconds after the splitting. The other part, t seconds after the splitting, falls to the ground at a distance x from the original point O. And so now they want us to find that distance x. So something happens up here. We have a projectile that has mass m and then it splits into two parts where each part now has half the mass one that falls vertically downward the other one that keeps going so we kind of have what we call a conservation of momentum and what we want to do is figure out how fast is the object moving at the top well it should be the same speed in the x as the original velocity in the x direction which is five meters per second so at this moment what happens is that the projectile is moving at 5 meters per second when it reaches the top, but if it splits into two and one piece falls vertically downward, that means it has no longer any velocity in the x direction and all the momentum is now transferred to the ob other object. It has half the mass, same momentum, so therefore it now has twice the speed. So the piece that is continuing straight is now going to be moving at 10 meters per second while the other piece starts falling straight down. So how far will the projectile go after this event? Well, let's find out how far it would have gone if it had simply gone its normal trajectory. And for that, we can use the range equation. The range equation is equal to the initial velocity squared times the sine of twice the angle divided by the acceleration due to gravity. So that would be the original, let's call it r sub naught, that would be the original distance. So in this case, that would have been equal to, well, the initial velocity would be 5 times the square root of 2 quantity squared times the sine of twice the angle, which is therefore 90 degrees, twice 45, divided by g, which is 10. Of course, the sine of 90 is 1. That would be 2 times 25, which is 50, so it would be 50 times 1 divided by 10, which is equal to 5 meters. So originally, the object would have gone a distance of 5 meters. So that means it would have gone 2.5 meters to reach the very top in the horizontal direction and another 2.5 meters by the time it came back down. But that's not the answer here because something happens up here. It splits into two pieces. The second piece now has double the speed. It takes the same amount of time for it to come down to the ground, a half a second. So we know t is equal to one half second. So t is equal to 0 0.5 seconds. And so therefore the distance for the second part, so let's call this distance two for the second part, is going to be equal to the velocity times time. And the new velocity is now going to be 10 meters per second. The time is still going to be a half a second should be a 5 there, 0.5, and so that would be equal to 5 meters. So 2.5 meters plus, now instead of going only 2.5 meters, it's going to go 5 meters in the second half because it now has twice the speed. It takes the same amount of time to hit the ground. So therefore, 2.5 plus 5, that means a distance of 7.5 meters before it hits the ground. And that is, of course, from the original point, because that's what they say from the original point, so 2.5 plus 5, 7.5 meters before it hits the ground. And that is how it's done. So when you think of it, it's not that hard of a problem. It can be done pretty quickly. And they were nice to them because they gave two things to look for in the same problem, so you only have to read the problem once. Save a little time.